I'm Brother Watkins. This is the first video in the Pivot Table module. I'm going to show you how to create Table A1. Now the first thing that you're going to do when you do a Pivot Table is you're going to make sure you're using the right data. Bad data gives you a bad report. There's no way around it and I'm hoping that you are familiar with the idea of reviewing your data so that when you go to create your report you're using the right information as a foundation. As you go forward in your careers, you're the one that's responsible for designing the data table. The data table for this example has four categories. Um, each category of data, each column here, has a header. And that allows the computer to figure out what you're trying to do uh, when you invoke the pivot table function. So let's do that. You always invoke a pivot table by starting with insert at the top, click, and then at the far left of the ribbon, the pivot table icon. When you click on the pivot table icon, what comes up is a selection here. Uh, the computer is asking you to verify that it got the range right. And you'll see the dotted line includes the names on each column and goes all the way to the bottom of the data. So that is correct. We want to put the pivot table report in a new worksheet. That's the default. If you put it in an existing worksheet, um, it's, it's hard not to overlap and it's harder to use the controls. So always try to open a new worksheet. You can always cut and paste or use an existing worksheet uh, sometime when you're far more comfortable with the formatting tools that this provides. But what you do is once you've created pivot table, you hit OK. It will take you out of the data and it will put you in a blank worksheet. Uh, it'll call it whatever, I think we're on sheet 5 here for me. So here we go. Sheet 5. The view that you see is a classic view. Uh, I believe this is the default view. You may see something else that says um, for you to use the pivot table field list. The program used to use a drag and drop interface where you would drag the category over and drop it in one of these boxes, a row or column. And the whole idea of pivot tables means that it pivots against this A3 box. You can either have it as a row or a column heading. You can pivot around. In this case, we're going to learn how to use the pivot table field list. These are your controls for this exercise. You always use um, what's over here on the right, and you have been asked to summarize total sales by the product category. So that means if we pull up the product, well, we don't want to see all the products. We just want to see the category. So when you're working with fields in pivot, in pivot tables, it's easy to just click and unclick. Uh, you should practice with this. Trial and error is the best way to learn the functionality of this part of the program. So let's read it again. Whenever you do a table, read carefully what you're being asked to prepare. You're being asked to summarize total sales by product category. So let's click on category. There we go. That looks reasonable. Let's click on sales. And the first time, just clicking the boxes, the computer figured out what we wanted to do. And it put the sum of sales in a value. It didn't put it as a subcategory. It didn't put it as a column. Just put it here as value. You see what I'm doing here is I'm left clicking on category and I can drag it anywhere. I can drag it up to the report filter, which is a page filter that we're going to learn to use in a different video. Or I could drag it down to row labels. That is it. That is the table. The only thing you need to do at this point is to format the table. You always polish up your work. Uh, formatting is important and on the test you'll lose points if you produce numbers that don't have commas and two decimal places. But the formatting of a pivot table number is a little different. There are two identical menus in pivot tables. When I right click on the field itself Sorry, left click on that. And let me move this down so you can see. Left click produces a menu that ends with value field settings. If I clicked, if I right click inside the field on the report, there's also a fields setting. Let's let's start with the one from the report just to show you what happens. What comes up is a box says field settings. You can change the name and the name it's talking about is right here. You can include subtotals. 
you can have some uh, layout items, but you can't format. Can't format. What you're looking for is just a simple way to format those numbers. Do not use the standard formatting tool that's found on the home ribbon. You're talking about fields, not cells. So the only way to do an appropriate format in pivot tables is to click on the field. So I click on the field, and again, I'll have to move this down to show you what's going on. This is where you format, value field settings. I click on it, and this box comes up, and right in the corner is a number format. So it's tricky to find, and let's get that right out of the way in the first of 24 videos. This is the only place that you can go to format the number uh, and have it stick to all the fields. So let's click on that. Um, I think you understand what we're looking for. You can either do a currency or you can just do a number format. Let's use number format so we don't have dollar signs. And use the thousand separator. Click two decimal places. Everything looks good and hit OK. And there it formatted. Uh, let's give it a little room. It's a little squished. There we've given it room. Now let's give it a table format. Final polish. And let's go with this uh, dark pivot style 9. We're going to use different styles over the course of this, this module just so you can get used to what's available. So we'll just use this blue dark 9. I click on it. There it is. If I'm going to print it out or show my boss. I'm going to kind of polish it up a bit. That's the table. That is the pivot table. You are done with the first pivot table. What it says is summarize total sales by product category and you've produced it that fast. So we're going to do these quicker as we go forward through the unit, but this is a good introduction. Uh, one last thing I forgot to uh, show you. Once you've done it by yourself, it's already done on the spreadsheet that you've downloaded from Instructor. So click on the A1 tab, which is green to match the green color bar. And, whoops, I went to A2. A1 should match Sheet 5, and they do. So that means you've got it right, and everything's good to go.